Chris McGinnis, Operations Coordinator for the Public Works Department. Chris Jacobs, Director of Public Works. Jan Hale, Deputy Director of Public Works. Mike Duby, Wastewater Operations. Good evening. Good evening. The, uh, we collectively have gone over our budget a number of times trying to anticipate maybe some of the questions or uh, and every year we always ask this more procedural question would you like us to just go down through and highlight the major changes or do you want uh, the quick and dirty uh, how do you how do you want to well what's the board's purview you know I think the people at home like to hear as much as possible yeah so I mean we have the time we don't want to get into the total weeds of everything right. but you know if you can go over what the changes are what some of the figures are I think that would be good if is that agreeable to everybody else so okay then uh, I hope everyone's got with them there's the actual budget and then there's the uh, attached um, detail sheets which a number of us are going to refer to to um, help jog our memories as to what uh, some of these things are probably and I'm going to start with um, under our operating budget uh, by expense um, this would be under the 4311 highways and streets uh, start right off with the administration line uh, regular wages are down by 0.79 percent we're uh, we've requested one million eighty four thousand nine thirty eight and been granted that uh, through uh, the manager's review um, it's slightly less than the one million and ninety three thousand last year um, it isn't due to that we've laid anybody off they're just uh, salary adjustments a number of people several people have retired um, we've had new people replace uh, uh, other people um, at uh, lo the lower starting uh, wage rates that are listed in the collective bargaining agreements uh, part-time wages has gone up uh, 14 and a half percent and I have a little note down to tells me to allow Teresa to explain why <laughs> that occurred uh, uh, part of that reason is we moved five thousand dollars from the engineering account which is a little bit further down uh, to pay for a summer intern in engineering. Uh, when we talked to the town manager, the past two years we've had it in the engineering account, but they preferred that it be moved to wages as it's being spent on wages. So we uh, further down, you'll notice a $5,000 decrease in that the engineering account. Uh, also, COLAs and step increases are reflected in their overtime wages, which causes it to go up incrementally. So that's the reasons for the increase in that account okay um, I'm just going to jump down through the you know career incentives have stayed the same our our telephones um, let's see that that's only that's gone up 5.6 percent um, it has to do with uh, some of the tablets that we're going to be acquiring for running our ex, uh, asset management system um, Let's see, heating fuel, if I'm reading this right, it's uh, taken a 7.4% decline. Um, just better tracking, better numbers of what we're doing. The one line that, you know, if you were to look at the percentage increases on the right side, uh, rentals and leases, uh, gone from a whopping $350 request last year to a $750. It's only because we have been transporting uh, when we say uh, rentals and leases, one of the biggest issues we have is if we have a large piece of equipment like one of the cat loaders or something like that that needs to go back to um, Milton Cat for work, um, repair work or annual maintenance outside of what we can do, the $300 haul fee comes out of this that particular line. So it doesn't take but one or two hauls and this year alone we're up to uh, 642 in that line so that's more of a as I said last year a truth in spending adjustment than it is uh, more than anything else um, building maintenance is as we're asking for a uh, let's see if I'm reading this right yeah uh, sorry supplies and expenses has gone up uh, almost 8,000 uh, 20% increase 
Um, as you can see, so far we've spent 22. Our line is actually 25. Um, in the previous year, we spent 50,000. Uh, this goes to, um, we have a metal building. Uh, the original was built in 67 with the addition in 87. Am I doing right? Closely? Yeah. Okay. Um, like, for instance, this year we had the uh, end of the building closest to the marsh, the, all the siding replaced uh, because it had literally rotted off the building. The last three inches was not there. The moisture that comes off the marsh every day and morning during the summer is laden with salt and it is eroding the building. We've painted um, the west end, the opposite end of the building, and we've uh, had a bunch of roof work done to keep the uh, ceiling from, you know, leaks from coming in the maintenance space. It hadn't really been done previously, um, so we're hoping to do a little more of it every single year rather than hit the town with, let's say, a new building. Uh, rather than, you know, I, I personally don't like seeing things go uh, rust or, or decay around us. I think uh, we, we owe it to the public to do a better job in maintenance, and that's why that, there's that 8% increase. Uh, another, so and so under the next line, building maintenance is is strictly twenty thousand is what we're asking this year. We asked ten last year, um, and we have spent twenty thousand eight eighty three to date this year. Um, let's see, diesel fuel is a well, gasoline's a negative five point six. Uh, there again, better tracking and that Wex uh, card that the town obtained for us last year, and diesel fuel is down 28%, which has been a good um, a good uh, deal. The biggest uh, increase under this whole section is for that federal stormwater requirements. Um, Jennifer and I regularly attend uh, our SECO Stormwater Alliance meetings. It has been told by Newton Tedder, who works for the EPA, that the permit will come out after the November election, but before the president gets sworn in, the new president gets sworn in. We'll all be caught up in the excitement of a new president, and um, that will soften the landing on this stormwater compliance. To be honest with you, we haven't sat back lightly on this. That's what partly our asset management software purchase is going to be about. But we are asking for fifty thousand in this year's coming budget, uh, where we were granted ten last year. And I know I've sat here multiple times and told you it's coming, because I've been told it's coming. Uh, but last year, Massachusetts was given their permit in a draft format with a uh, six-month get used to it and another six-month ramp-up period, and then it becomes permanent. Well, the same thing is going to happen to us. And um, I would say the writing is definitely on the wall. Uh, let's see. I'll go down to the bottom of the page. Engineering services, we are showing a 12% decrease, but as Teresa explained, it's merely a moving 5K out of that engineering budget up to uh, seasonal wages. Seasonal wages, thank you. I'm think of all the fun stuff. I'm going to the next page. Um, I'm glad to see that there's a lot of zeros and uh, uh, only a 1.65 increase in, in repairs and maintenance, and that's buildings, buildings wide. Uh, if I can check my my line, yeah, uh, repairs and maintenance is um, well, it's actually under the paving the and reconstruction, right? It's highways. Uh, Again, 22,000 in there for resurfacing, some patchwork, 13.5 uh, uh, screen gravel that we buy every year. And then we have three standing, well, not standing, but contracts that we have every year. Line painting, the crosswalk and traffic markings, and weed control. Um, I can say that um, we're doing a better job with line painting as in maintaining what we have. But I do know that I'm seeing that the number of linear feet of line painting increase. Uh, more people are uh, 
as the population ages are insisting on the white fog lines on the side of the road where we may not have had any of them before. Uh, we're painting out more crosswalks for traffic safety. Uh, and we are adding to, it seems every year there's a slight addition to the weed control budget. What that's for is, uh, I don't know if everyone knows, we hire an outside firm, they go down through town and actually treat all the sidewalks uh, against weed growth. We also use them up in the landfill. They keep, if you've been up there, you see, or drive by, you see this nice stone swales coming down off the side of the uh, landfill. Uh, it isn't by a miracle that they stay weed free. It's due to the efforts of this company here. So we do use them in a number of places to uh, keep back the poison ivy and keep back the weeds. Um, I wish they had intervened I, on the poison ivy at my place. I wouldn't be wearing this little wristband at the moment. Um, so that I am seeing a slight increase in those um, lines, but I would have to say that it's it's a level of service uh, back to the residents. Uh, it's been requested. We you know it's like lawns. Now can you mow this? Can you mow that? And that account also changes. Uh, moving on, uh, let's see. Lawn care does stay the same. Hired equipment um, stays the same as last year, as does tree maintenance. I would like to say I, I had earlier this summer given to Fred uh, a listing. We're up to close to 40 trees having been removed already this year. I know of at least one, two, three six to eight others that are, have been identified and are scheduled to be removed. These are trees that are, are totally dead. There's one out on Exeter Road. I couldn't get over how many holes are in it. It's a wonder it didn't blow down before. Uh, and we've also um, trimmed back branches on at least a dozen trees. Uh, so, and, and I will be giving to the budget committee um, verification of that and we've been keeping track of it actually I have a tree maintenance list where the trees were cut when they were cut and how much we paid for them and um, we're getting good service uh, with our vendor and we're staying on top of it we're doing the work that that account is supposed to be done I know it shows actually 8880 uh, I know it's well over I've signed well over ten or twelve thousand dollars worth of tree invoices so that there's more going to be coming out of that account. Um, street signs, we're still in the process of uh, trying to stay on top of them. I had a discussion with Fred. We are going to be ordering new street signs. We're going to get the town seal actually embossed on the, on the part of the street sign. And for the general public, all the street signs that have four-inch letters still have to be upgraded to six-inch letters. It's supposed to be by the end of next year, but uh, I haven't seen anybody jumping all over us for that. Um, working our way down, storm drainage and drainage construction in general is staying the same at the request of 30000 each. Sidewalks, again, we're staying with the 26000 uh, We've just completed a project on High Street, uh, several sections. Jen headed it up. Um, we had to bid the project twice to get a contractor in, but we were successful to finally find one that wanted to work with us. And um, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. They they just have so much work out there. So we were finally able to talk someone into giving us a price, and it was a fair price, and we got the, some of the work done. Handicaps were, um, ramps replaced or installed where there were none. And um, so we're like liking to continue with that same number. Uh, we could always use more, but uh, I think we're going to rely on a warrant article process again, like we did last year, because we have more sidewalks in need than we have budget. Sand and salt, uh, over uh, for us, just going to snow and ice removal, all those lines we're requesting to stay the same. We've got our toes and fingers crossed that we'll have a equally mild winter as in last year. Um, so we've got 67860 for wages, uh, 30000 for hired equipment, uh, salt at 80, and uh, sand at 13877 I know I'm going to get asked how come I haven't bought any sand. It's because I have enough in the pile right now. 
but I ha can say that for that 13,000, it's good insurance money. If it does become a difficult winter, i.e. cold temperatures and a lot of pack being on the side streets, sand is the primary thing we use to prevent the water from being contaminated with salt and to give the traction where we need it on the side roads. So I could go through, I've seen it in the past where we literally would, could go through half of our sand in one winter. Um, just depends on what kind of winter it is. So I would respectfully request that, and, and you haven't, the administration has left it in there that we not trim that budget line. Uh, municipal sanitation. Let's see, my notes even say see the backup. Overtime wages. I want to give that a. You, you know more on the wages. Over, Overtime. Ooh, yes, thank you. All right, hang on one Wait. second, please. Yeah. Overtime wages. Okay, um, for the most part, that increase is due to uh, the base wages being increased for colas and step increases, and that ref is reflected upwards in the increase in overtime wages and based on um, need for for that section. They have to work uh, every holiday, they have to work every Saturday and every Sunday by state and federal law, because the tests have to be done. So it's um, work that has to be accomplished and that's the only way it can be done, because the testing has to occur every day of the week, every, every day of the year. So that's the explanation for the increase in that account. And we've actually, uh, Teresa's actually prepared as part of the budget detail on this page 48 of the budget detail. Actually, you know, the 52 Saturdays, the 52 Sundays, the 11 holidays, um, 80 call-ins. Uh, the plan is getting a little bit older internally, and there seems to be more and more uh, things to have to come in after hours for. Pumps shutting off, pumps not working. Uh, chlorine not being pumped, etc. Uh, we're seeing more and more of that. Um, and then there's 100 hours of miscellaneous overtime wages in there. So there's uh, also sewer call-ins, and we do carry $1,700 for rye, but I want to be clear that we do get reimbursed for that if we build, build them. Uh, let's see, the next line that's got a, a significant increase is the telephone under the wastewater treatment plant and there again that has to do with um, when we go with the tablets and the tablets will should help us with the overtime calls um, with the asset management software that we have in place and in, in it's actually called SCADA within the plant right now for instance Michael can sit at home and if there's a call in or alarm, he can literally pop open his laptop, check into the plant, and tell which pumps shut down and which pumps running, maybe which one's overheated. If one's jammed, does he have the? He has the ability to start and stop pumps remotely from from home, and or see whether or not somebody needs to come in two hours early, or can it wait till seven o'clock in the morning? So the two tablets is going to. Um, the whole plan is under the asset management system to expand that so that other people like Steve Aslan who lives in town, um, uh, Mike Carl who lives in Portsmouth, or I guess he is moving closer, uh, and Rob Pierce are the kind of people that can respond to these things. So we pay a little more for the technology and the phone service to run that technology. Hopefully it saves us on a violation and, and some overtime calls. Although I, I know I'm going to have to agree with them if it's a significant amount of computer time to get it, it's it's a call in. But if it's a five minute open it, oh, okay, no big deal. I don't have to go in, and that's what we're hoping to get with that. Um, the other thing, there's a one line that's got a shocking uh, number to it, and it says a 700 per percent increase, and it has to do with uh, the flow meters. Uh, it's under hired equipment. For wastewater treatment. Did, Mike, did you want to speak to that? Yeah, that's a uh, requirement that we have to do every year, kind of like administrative order that we had back in 2011. So we just rent these uh, flow meters and we put them in the sewer lines to uh, calibrate our flow. 
flow coming into the plant compared to the flow going out. Because we don't have an influent flow meter, we have an outgoing flow meter. So. And it's important, I think, to note that that line, although it went up 700%, it only had 200 in it before, <laughs> and so we're going to 1,600. We're not taking it. Um, we're taking it the cost of the flow meters to rent it. That's what's getting added to that line. Is that something you could buy or no? It doesn't. Would it be not cost efficient? All that question, I'll let them answer. It's been. Yeah, you, we could purchase it, but the amount of times we would use it, we would take it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, everything else within that line it appears to be, you know, relatively either down, like uh, gasoline again is down 29 percent, but uh, one line is up 8.6 uh, percent. The supplies and expenses. Again, we have some 375 uh, various pieces of equipment, pumps, motors, valves, uh, things that can go wrong. We've actually broken it down uh, by those, uh, so we're looking for a slight increase uh, for, to go from 67. Uh, we have 81,000 in this year's budget. We'd like to go to 88,000. Uh, there again, aging plant, and uh, more and more of these little things are going to come up, and they're going to nag us. So overall, if you look at municipal sanitation, the wastewater treatment plant, it's only a, overall it's only a one percent increase. Um, labor that solid waste collection. Um, again, we get we had a, a great rate last year. We're still seeing the benefit of that. Um, We've got regular wages with only 0.88% increase, um, part-time wages a 1.29% increase. Um, we do have overtime wages uh, increasing 111% or going from basically 20,000 to 40,000. This has to do with we, Jim Hafey's? No, is uh, this is a rubbish collection on weekends. Um, Five-year average is thirty-seven thousand. It's just uh, that the number number never we asked for it to get increased, and it doesn't. So over the past three or four years, uh, it stays the same. So every year we ask for more, and it just every year they get a cola or a step increases. Uh, it increases the overtime rate as well. So uh, it's based on need on the hours that they actually work on the weekends, collecting trash in the summertime. And there again, um, on the summary that uh, Teresa prepared, all the staff prepared, um, it's, you know, three holidays, 16 Saturdays, 16 Sundays in the summer, and the memorial to Labor Day over time, 592 hours to collect all that trash. So uh, that's what it's taken to, to get it done uh, during the summer, especially those 13 weeks. Um, and like Teresa I said last year there, there was always going to be some budget modifications, and this is one of those, as I said, a truth in spending uh, adjustment to the budget, just trying to bring some truth to it. Um, the only other thing that I can see that's uh, making a marked increase is the 14.5%, and that has to do with diesel fuel. Um, got budgeted 39.6%. Easily gone through o over half of that, and uh, but we're recommending 45, 355. There again, um, when I'm here with you and we go over the cart collection policy, back to the condos, and who do we give carts to and who don't we? This is one of those lines that indirectly, when we make those kinds of decisions, up or down, um, is affected by the diesel line because more carts is just literally going to take more fuel. It's more stops. It's more acceleration, more deacceleration. It's more if they fill up, and, and like when I told you last month, okay, trash is up 31 tons. Well, when each truck only holds a couple of tons, it's more runs back to the, to the transfer station. So this is a line that um, I don't like it when it goes up, but it's, 
I'd say it's a sign of a good economy if it does go up. Um, and it's it's a necessary line. It's it's one of those lines that year in and year out, if, if I was continually only given 39603 would I exceed that line? Yeah, because it's, it's out there and you have to pick it up. It's a health issue. So um, I think we're just trying to bring that one more into uh, truth in what we actually are going to be using. Uh, landfill operations, no changes there. Um, we're under a multi-year contract uh, for uh, uh, landfill monitoring, groundwater monitoring, and the landfill maintenance. Uh, waste tipping fees, we are seeing a 1% increase in waste tipping. We got a really great rate last year. It does go up by cost of living adjustment. Um, I think it went up a quarter a ton. Um, and it, in the end, it, based upon the tonnage that we collect, it's going to raise that whole line by 1%. Same thing with the hauling. They got a 4% increase in their contract. And when we back figure the number of tons to the, to the increase, it's 2.87. It's, again, a contractual number. Um, transfer station, um, we're seeing the uh, regular wages tick up by 1.9%, 1.97%. Again, a uh, contractual thing. Uh, the part-time wages went down by 68%. It's, but don't hold your breath. The uh, overtime wages went up by uh, 31%. Reason being is we used to have a part-time worker who only came in three weekends out of four in a month, ran the transfer station for us. He found another job. Uh, could no longer come in there. Um, we looked back again at the contract with the Teamsters. It didn't allow for that um, to continue. We went back and within the co Teamsters contract, and that's the overtime that it's going to take for the weekends to fulfill that, that portion of the contract. It just really is um, staffing time. That's it. Is there more to that? Did I miss something on no, that? No, okay. I have these three here to keep me in uh, in line, and if I get off track, they're supposed to kick me. No. Okay. Um, I will turn one other line over to uh, Teresa. Staff development. Uh, we're going from an approved line of thirteen fifty to twenty six sixty, and it has to do with training. Uh, we have 28 employees that have to have their solid waste operator certificate renewed every year at $50 a piece. And every other year, the Waymasters have to have theirs renewed. And in 2017, we have 14 employees who have to have their uh, Waymaster certification renewed at $90 a piece. So that's the increase, $1,200. Is that annually or was it by annually? By annually for um, Waymasters. Right, so you might see a decrease in this line next year, next year there'll be a then decrease, yeah. back up the following year, then back down. And there's no training involved in that, mm -hmm. so uh, it's just a $90 uh, renewal fee. Uh, the number of the other lines are still staying the same. St uh, uh, the the uh, electric, heating, fuel, water, they're all staying the same. Transfer station repairs and maintenance has gone up 200 fit or projected to, to request to go up to 250 percent, and Jennifer's noted here to fill you in as to why. Uh, basically, on this one, the repairs and maintenance uh, obviously stem from the building itself. Um, there's interior and exterior cleaning that needs to occur. Um, it happens daily. Uh, there's things that need to be painted. The scale house has to be maintained, uh, recertified. But really, what is making um, the difference here? is the retaining wall uh, that is there currently. Under this year's budget, and shortly, uh, there's two blocks that we're replacing. Uh, if you haven't been there lately, uh, there's some movement uh, happening. Uh, we've had someone come in and look at it to get us the two blocks to make the repair. Uh, we're confident there, but when we were up there, um, it, it's time to take a look at the whole wall system, not just the one side where we saw the slight repair, but there's evidence of some slight overturning in those type of things. So we've put in the budget um, $28,000 to actually bring in a structural engineer 
do the right types of testing, similarly uh, to what we're doing at Bicentennial Wall, uh, borings and test pits, uh, to find out what's going on there. Um, whereas that is where all the uh, construction debris, the, the big trailers sit underneath and everybody comes up top um, where we want to make safety improvements and do fencing and all these type of things. We, we need to fix it all at once. Um, so that is the jump in that line. The next that line down is hired equipment for the transfer station um, going from a whopping $100 to $500, which is a 400% increase. Um, the reason for requesting that is uh, we realized we're uh, in a tragically unfavorable position. We've had a number of, let's see, we had the roll-off truck die on the side of 101, almost had to have it towed. If the right mechanic, good thing that the right mechanic showed up from the right on-road repair shop, he was actually able to fix it so it could limp back to the to the maintenance facility. It was still on the outer edge of 101. But um, we've had incidences where the trailer has been on the side of the road, um, wheels lock up, things of that nature. If we have one tow with a tight budget, we had no ability to get it. So um, get either the equipment back here or let's say to a Rochester truck repair if we needed to halfway in between. So um, more than once we've actually, as you can see in 2015, we actually spent $505. So we went back to that actual amount and that's why we're asking for that. Uh, looks like a whopping increase, but it's $400. Um, transfer station gasoline is only up 6.7%. Diesel fuel is up 24%. Uh, percent. Again, it has to do with, the, in part, the volume of the materials that we're handling. We're also handling, um, I was driving through the yard tonight. I, I couldn't get over the size of the wood debris uh, area. Uh, we do pay to get that chipped. But uh, between that and the compost, we spend a tremendous amount of time actually turning the compost. Our vendor won't take the compost from us unless we keep it turned and so it, it's decomposed. Um, and that just takes manpower time and it takes um, diesel fuel and the fact that we have a payloader to do it. Um, so. Overall, that solid waste disposal is, is up 7.3%, um, 7, 7 but as I say, 2% was probably due to salaries, 2% uh, is due to hauling, um, things that um, as we grow are uh, inherent in why that line is going to increase. Uh, with that, I'll, on sewage collection and disposal, uh, I have notes down to like Jun Jennifer to talk about sewer line maintenance. All right, so this year, um, if you all recall, we may have spent all our money on a force mate. So that means <laughs> the 130000 that was in the sewer line was used to repair the force mate uh, back in uh, February, March. With that said, we didn't get to what was hopefully planned for this year. And moving forward, when we went to uh, look at the CIP in the upcoming years uh, that we presented, we're just realizing that it, we're falling behind. Um, so in the CIP, as well as what we're presenting to you and what we'll present to the Budget Committee, is the list of projects that we know need to get done um, and the amount that we need to keep increasing this line in order to keep up with the work. Because the current value of 130, whether we have used it just for the force main this year, or in reality, if we had gotten to some of the projects like we intended, it's just not enough to keep us moving forward, replacing the old clay pipes, um, having the backup money for if there's any damages or breaks. Uh, so that's the, the big sewer line maintenance um, change. And again, we, we do hope to be each year coming back and asking for a little bit more so we can catch up. Uh, the infrastructure is old. There it is. Supplies and maintenance stays the same. Um, going down to this, the last two lines, Exeter Sewer Treatment Agreement stays the same at a $7,000 request. 
think it's been the same for the last five years that I've been here. And uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, maintenance, we're trying to move from uh, 55,000, uh, which was budgeted last year, to 60,000. Um, it stems from my notes, it's electrical ahead. repairs. Right. Uh, having money in there where we have to hire an electrician by law. Yeah, there was in the past we we never well we did a lot of things ourselves and we realized uh, two years ago that uh, we weren't keeping um, people safe and we weren't doing things everything pursuant to code so um, now we have we bid that out I think Relco is our Relco. Relco. and um, they do a fantastic job for us um, quick response uh, correct the first time we never seem to have any issues with the work they do um, but we are carrying that in there for that particular line this year uh, with that the sum total is uh, sewer and treat sewer treatment budget is only up well it's at eight percent because of that five thousand um, dollars but uh, municipal sanitation is up five point one three percent of course that is for the in part for the waste solid waste and the grand total for the department is four percent and the grand total is the grand total number that we're requesting is or, or has been approved through the manager's office five million one hundred and seventy thousand and four hundred and two dollars questions Regina so you're requesting five million one hundred Seventy-four oh two dollars, which is a hundred, a little over one hundred ninety-eight thousand dollar increase from last year. Correct. And within that, you pretty much, like Jen has stated, our infrastructure is very old. And yeah, we're seeing. Well, case in point is, you know, the, as I said before, it's the you're getting a confluence of, of everything come and do at the same time. The Lafayette Road sewer that we talked about last year, the Church Street Force Main. Um, you know, repairs in the retaining retaining wall at the transfer station, um, building maintenance on the, for the outside skin. All these things are coming together at the same time, right. and, and 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 really stressing our ability to maintain at least even what we have. So, I mean, I think that you, as a department, and with the help of the town manager, have really put together a great budget that is taking that all into consideration. And the increases I see are things that we just really don't have too much control over as far as waste pickup correct over time like you explained it and it's explained in the detail yeah and I mean, tonight like for instance that ADU that you're, you're talking about and it will be great for the community I especially in the in the rental market but what that will mean is more wastewater more trash so when we make improvements in the community there are corresponding results that will happen, and they come downhill to me, and I just have to deal with them. Okay. And then just one specific question I have on administration under highways and streets, the federal stormwater requirements, just so if anyone looks like this year, yeah, we've only spent $331, but what you're saying is that probably this time next year. Right, and that, three and essentially higher. And that 331, again, is an older number from when these got put together. Since then, there's been um, uh, equipment purchased to help us do with the testing that is going to be required under the new permit. Um, we were able to get that through uh, one of the vendors that we currently work with uh, at the wastewater treatment plant. It's also part of our stormwater collaborative that I came to the board about to enter in with the uh, Southeast uh, Watershed Alliance and the Stormwater Coalition uh, to put together the guidance documents. Um, so more money has already been spent. By the end of the year, we'll be close to spending what we did have. And we are using the guidance of many others in the community just to come up with the 50. Um, they say it could be hundreds of thousands more. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Mr. Bean? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director uh, Michael, Jennifer, Teresa, you and uh, your uh, your department's doing an extraordinary job. You're our largest budget uh, item. Uh, you're uh, an equally important uh, department with any department uh, in the town. And uh, we all commend you for your superlative work, uh, your surge operations in the summer, your surge operations when it rains heavily, your surge operations when it uh, um, 
is inclement snow weather, and uh, it is not just population dependent as perhaps other departments are. It's 24/7. It's year-round, and uh, it's um, it's really remarkable, remarkable leadership and remarkable uh, performance of duty by you guys, uh, Director. I wanted to just touch briefly, and I don't need a response tonight. Is uh, if you could just prepare a uh, uh, um, uh, position paper uh, for. <laughs> Excuse me for the board if they, uh, the board agrees on how our agreements with uh, um, municipal users to our system uh, um, are uh, taxed, if you will, or, or burdened as we are with increases uh, by virtue of the agreements they have with us. That would be the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the town of Rye. Uh, any others that are out there? Those are the two biggies. Those are the two biggies. We see these increase. We see these costs. We see this force main. Uh, these folks have contracts in place. And uh, I would look, uh, and perhaps the board would as well, on uh, what is the, uh, the uh, end state right now and uh, any suggestions that you might have that those contracts could be modified, even uh, discussed uh, during an interim basis with these uh, uh, people that piggyback off of our expense, off of our infrastructure, off our taxpayer burden. And uh, if you could get that to us, um, okay. that would be great if the board uh, has no objection. Thanks. And again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, great job. And please extend that to all your uh, your, your people. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, I don't really think it's, you know, all in all, it's really not that much of an increase considering everything that's been going on. Um, I feel that um, if there's a little bit more expense uh, picking up the trash, it's there. You know, there's more money coming in exact for that purpose, um, <clears throat> and you know things do go up, just like the employees. Uh, you know, pay scale goes up, mm -hmm. so things do go up. Uh, and I think it's something we have to, to address. Uh, we want to make sure that Hampton continues to have the same level of services that they have. Otherwise, that needs to really be explained. And, um, you know, I, I feel that you're all doing a good job. One thing that troubles me, and it's not a big thing, but you mentioned that you took taking down 40 trees. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be at a cost of ten to 12000 I'd like to see a point arrive for the town that when they're going to take 40 trees down, they put some more up. If they can spend ten to twelve thousand dollars to pay someone to take them out, we should be able to spend ten to twelve thousand to put some new trees in. A tree, uh, from what I've been told recently, and I don't know if this is true, but I've heard several people say it this way: one tree makes oxygen for four people. And, you know, we need those trees to be sucking up water. Uh, that's a, a good thing that they do. Some, you know, these dead trees are falling down because they're not, I don't know exactly how it works if they get waterlogged or whatever, uh, just plain diseased. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that we should think of some way, every tree that's taken down can't be put up again because there may be some reason why it's coming through the sidewalk or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But like a golf course, you can put another one close by, you know, when you're playing a, in a ball and it doesn't quite go in the hole. Yeah. I mean, we should be doing something. We have it, had the discussion that the ones that I took down in Founders Park, Par Park, Lock Road Park, and a few other locations should be replaced. I was hoping to put them together as one contract uh, as we got down here into the winter you know specify the trees and the location have a couple people bid on it and then get it encumber the money and get it done in the spring yeah because um, whether this should be part of your budget or whether it should be some type of a warrant article a lot of people spoke very uh, strongly when they saw that the trees were tagged mm -hmm. and um, you know if you look back upon the history of Hampton already there's so many trees that aren't here anymore. And uh, we need to be planting trees where they're being taken out. Main, and I think the water, uh, the benefits that come from helping water stay off the roads, uh, all of that, not to mention the oxygen, 
you know, I, we need to plan for the future. I agree. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, you've done a good job of explaining your budget, I, I think, really well. You know, I think especially the things like the building maintenance that you talked about, that, uh, you know, if you don't do it, you're going to pay for it in the end. Right. I mean, it, it, you know, and it, it, one of the problems is that we haven't stayed up a lot with, with, you know, in budgets, and we've kept things down, and then we just don't stay up with our maintenance, and then we just go falling behind, behind, behind. So I, I, I think people have to realize that the federal uh, storm water requirements, nothing we can do about that, right? Mm -hmm. if, they, if they come down and tell us we're going to do it, we're going to do it. So, I mean, budgeting for it, I think, is really important and, and intelligent. Do you think if we, nobody can predict, but the winter, have you budgeted sufficiently if we got smacked? There is, yes, there is sufficient bud budget remaining in the, uh, let's say if we got 30 inches of snow, I hope not, in November, December, yeah, we're covered. 20 inches of snow, we're definitely covered. Um, because we go and go till December 31st on the fiscal budget. So, yes, we're, we're adequately covered. And we had positions, a uh, vehicle maintenance position and other uh, positions uh, that didn't get filled this year, not till later in the year. Uh, so as a grand total for the budget, we're well under target. And I think there's sufficient room to handle whatever happens. Good. Uh, the telephone thing you talked about, now that's going to, in, in effect, though, increase the productivity and increase the, the efficiency of your department. So right. it's, it's something that's going up, but it's something that's going to pay for itself, hopefully, in the end and, yes. and make it much safer it would be the fact wouldn't it right yeah so i mean that that's all very good uh overtime is stuff we really don't have a lot of control over because of the fact that it's contractual or we have to well, I mean, because of the services we're providing it, it, there again it's indirectly it's a choice if we elect a couple times we've talked about what's the possibility of adding staff to the department if we and in the past, for budgetary reasons, we've avoided that. Well, when we avoid that, we choose another path, and the other path is additional overtime. We're already paying the health benefits and the retirement benefits. Um, there's there's a, a, a less of an increase just to pay the overtime than it is to add, let's say, 5, 10, 15 people. So I think that's it's, it's a choice, and that's where you – as a result of that choice, that's where we see that fall out in that line. Would you? I would agree. Um, and some of the services that we provide on the weekends, in order to have coverage, you have to have overtime because the contracts uh, don't allow for hiring full-time people to work on weekends outside of their uh, contractual work hours and days. So right. it's the services that we provide that drive the overtime costs right and if we were to provide if we were to hire more people it would the benefits would the benefits would then right then you'd see the town's budget increase in other right areas right. Like. with an understanding that the hiring of more people i mean you made a great comment the level of service we currently give but as the demand on our services increase that level of service to keep giving it you know, at some point, mm -hmm. lends itself to well. There's still not there's not enough overtime. You know, right. there, there's people, so it, it is a balance right now. Yeah, last works. winter, like in snow removal, everybody was willing to work the overtime. The winter before, they were just saying enough is enough, especially when we got into the hundred inch mark. So yeah, there there is a point of no return. Right. No, I think it's a, I think you've done a good job, uh, and, and it, people have to realize too that you're. Department services every single solitary person in town, mm -hmm. and every single solitary person that comes into town. Right, which is I think very important for people to realize. You know, it's, it's a total service, and I agree with what Selectman Bean said that we should look at uh, people that are using our you know outside the Rye and the state, to see if we can't redo some contracts. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate what you do.